Hi, I'm Kirby Allison. I'm really excited to be here in London at the World Championship of Shoemaking uh, with Jesper. Jesper, thank you so much for, uh, for spending some time with us. And uh, this is the man behind the competition. So, you know, why don't you share a little bit about you and, uh, you know, kind of what the inspiration was for this, uh, this competition. I started getting into shoes like maybe, what is it, eight, nine years ago now. Uh, and then pretty quickly I got really into it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it, happens. Yeah, it, it happens. Yeah, it happens. A hazard. And, of. and then after uh, a year or two, I, uh, my wife said that you spending all this time uh, surfing and uh, doing uh, just uh, writing in, on forums and all that, do something proper with it, start a blog. Uh, so I started shoegazing, uh, first in Swedish and now also in English. Uh, it's been growing much larger than I ever imagined. And through that, uh, I started a uh, a uh, big event in Stockholm, uh, call it Shoegaze Super Supertrunk Show. And then we did it in uh, London uh, uh, last year, a London Super Supertrunk Show, even bigger, yeah. uh, where we have then 10 uh, exhibitors. So this is technically kind of the second yeah, exactly. version the of second this event. Last year it was, it was really just a Super Trunk Show, yeah. and then you had the World Championship exactly. of Shoe Polishing. Yeah, World Championship of Shoe Shining. And then, uh, for uh, this year, uh, something that I've been talking about and thinking about for a long time, but now I got to get with a bunch of other people that also said that maybe we should get this together, and that was making a world championships in shoemaking, because we have some competitions uh, that uh, that's around, but not really, not in this made in the same way as it was uh, back in the days in the early 1900s, uh, where competitions were. Uh, important part for the shoemakers and they really pushed themselves for this uh, so we wanted to bring back that uh, a bit uh, yeah. I mean so the idea really is you know is not new I mean it was something that historically you know was uh, was actually commonplace yeah. and I, if you go to like uh, Northampton Shoe Museum here in England uh, who have a huge archive of shoes the most amazing ones there are exhibit shoes for different competitions and exhibitions because there the shoemakers push themselves to do things that it's not really necessarily practical for a wear, but it shows what you can do with the craftsmanship, and it's uh, it's something that also makes them better when they do these things for the for the makers, and it's that's what we want to bring back: show what uh, what amazing stuff these yeah. shoemakers can do. You know, the idea actually kind of came together quite kind of spon not spontaneously because you'd been thinking about it, but it all came together relatively quickly yeah. you know, while we were traveling through Tokyo, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, we met with uh, Edmund Schenecker, who is one of the uh, partners of the event, uh, who uh, said that he, yeah, you should really do this. And he was uh, uh, willing to sponsor with prize money because yeah. we think we need prize money Absolutely. to uh, get the traction from the really good makers yeah. and because they spend a lot of time on yeah. their shoes so yeah. they have to get something, something. Uh, in there for them yeah. and then we talked to you uh, and we talked to uh, Gary Tok of Master Shoemakers yeah. mm -hmm. and then we got a good amount of prize money we have six thousand pounds yeah. uh, that will be shown on the screen yeah exactly it's uh, and we've seen that I was a bit worried because like you said it was rather late we already didn't know that we were having the event yeah. uh, here in April and then uh, uh, we went out with it, I think it was maybe three, month, four months before, yeah. which could be relatively tight for a for shoemaker yeah. to uh, put together a shoe. Uh, but we had 43 contestants registered and 30 of them sent in shoes. Yeah. And I think that's an amazing turnaround. Yeah. And so speak to a little bit about kind of the range of shoes, because that's kind of important also. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, aspiring shoemakers and... Yeah, exactly. We, we basically ones. have everything. Here. And that's... We only set uh, uh, a relatively not too detailed uh, uh, description, uh, and it was open for everyone. Am amateur shoemakers, to up to the real professionals who've done this for decades. Uh, so it's a hand welted shoe with a hand stitched, uh, sole st handmade sole stitch, uh, black cap to Oxford, uh, natural sole, and the black uh, heel and sole edges. Basically, that's what we uh, yeah. took uh, to just summarize yeah. the guidelines. Which is kind of the, uh, you know, the, the benchmark of a beautiful shoe. Yeah, exactly. Like that's what the, everyone, I mean, if you talk to shoemakers in here, I probably guess that uh, 9 out of 10, they sell that the Black Cop to Black Oxford, Oxford is the best seller. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it yeah. should certainly be the first bespoke shoe, in my opinion, that anyone has made. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so you had both, 
you know, shoemakers, from established shoemakers like Daniel Wiegand from Gatiano. Yeah. Uh, you had, uh, who was the, the We had Christophe Corte, Philippe Corte. Lenza. Yeah. And we had also had like, more like ready to wear made to order brands like Bosch. And, yeah. uh, and then we have amateurs uh, who just, you know, yeah. make shoes for fun at home. Yeah. Uh, so it's really the whole Quite spectrum. Quite right. a spectrum. Yeah. Well, that's great. So, I mean, how do you see this as being important for shoemaking? I feel like, you know, bespoke shoemaking is really in, in the midst of a renaissance, a resurgence. Yeah, exactly. And this and is taking it up to another level, I think, in a way, because uh, part of it is showing uh, pushing themselves, the makers, to have a sh new challenge. I know that so several of the makers that entered, they said that this is amazing because I, I can't do this for my own purpose, but now I actually have a reason to really push myself and try to do something uh, that I can't do for a sample shoe or for uh, customer shoes. So that's one part to, you know, for the makers yeah. that, that enters, mm -hmm. but also for all the other uh, uh, I can tell you that we're both from London, but also shoemakers from all over the world. Yeah. They will travel here to, see, to view these yeah. shoes. What we wanted to do with this uh, event was to, uh, uh, of course, exhibit shoes that's not available in, uh, in England mm -hmm. and gather people from, uh, uh, from the British shoe industry and the customers and meet together. But with the... London version, because London is sort of the capital of shoes. Yeah. Uh, we, we saw it last year, and I think we will see it even more this year, that people travel in, uh, customers and people from the industry come here to meet. Absolutely. And the shoemaking competition makes it extra interesting. Uh, I know for a fact that people, uh, that's something that yeah. made them uh, uh, jump the fence and uh, travel here. To yeah, I mean, one of the things that had certainly struck me is, you know, there's bespoke shoemakers here, uh, yeah. you know, there's, you know, people from the industry, uh, you know, we've got Gary Talk, an author, you know, who's written a lot about bespoke shoemaking. Uh, but you just also have enthusiasts. And, yeah, exactly. You know, and people that just love shoes. Yeah. And, you know, even, even they, you know, were some of the ones that have flown over. I mean, I ran into a friend of mine that I know from New York that flew yeah. over just from this. Yeah, you exactly. know, just earlier we were speaking to some, you know, uh, patina artist and shoe shiners from uh, Montreal. Yeah, exactly. You yeah, know, and that have come all the people, way over from yeah, this. Yeah, several Asians, Russians. Uh, uh, I think there's one guy from Morocco, Morocco uh, who's traveled. I mean, so it's uh, yeah, it's really a gathering for uh, the classic shoe yeah. world. So, yeah. Yeah. well, thank you so much for putting this together. I think you know the rest of the day, you know, we'll be filming some interviews, and then you know we have the World Championship of Shoe Polishing, mm -hmm. uh, which will be coming up here shortly, and then you know all of the judging occurred yesterday. Uh, for the World Championship of Shoemaking, but we'll also be announcing who those winners are. Yeah, exactly. Well, Jesper, hey, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Really Cheers. appreciate everything you've been doing, and uh, I couldn't be more excited to be here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.